Welcome, friend. I'm Rick Pasquale. Thank you for joining us today. I believe God has a word for you. I know God loves you and has a plan for your life. So listen to this live service and let God speak to you. Well, the theme this month is uh, from the book of Joshua, the first few chapters getting to Jericho. And I know that Pastor Rick has already talked about the victory at Jericho, but before that victory happened, there were several things that had to happen first. As you know, the Israelites had been traveling from Egypt up into the Promised Land, which was a wonderful place that God had prepared for them. But coming up to Jericho, they happened to be on the wrong side of the Jordan River. Wrong side of the Jordan River. And so what they had to do is get across the Jordan so that they could get the victories that God had planned for them there uh, on the other side. And so it is in Joshua chapter 3 verse 5, it says, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow God is going to do some amazing things among you. I love that verse, don't you? Let's pray. Lord, today I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll help each one of us to do just that to consecrate ourselves to you. I pray in Jesus' name that you will open our hearts, that we will hear what you have to say to us today, and we give you the praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so he says, um, to consecrate yourselves. Now the word consecrate literally means to set apart. It means you set yourself apart for a purpose. This is a big struggle for humans. How many are humans here today? Any humans? This is a big struggle for humans to set ourselves apart because we want to be like everybody else and we want to tend to blend in with everyone else. That had been a big struggle for Israel. Here Israel is approaching the promised land after 40 years of wandering around in the desert because they would not listen. Early on, just a, a short time after they had left Egypt, Moses had sent some spies up to check the land out. And Joshua and Caleb happened to be two of the spies that brought back a positive report. There were ten other guys who said, we cannot do it. We walked through that land, and those people are so big, it's not a chance we're going to be able to take them. But God had said, don't be afraid, I'm going to be with you, go and... and but when they got back, the people decided to listen to the ten spies who gave the negative report, in spite of what Joshua and Caleb had said. And so they wanted just to blend in with everyone else. And here is uh, Israel is approaching now, and God had tried to do this before, but he says, it's time now to listen, it's time for us to go in. Human nature wants to blend in with everybody else, but spiritual nature wants us to please God's commands. Had the Israelites listened to the, the spiritual guidance that God was giving them, they would have saved 40 years. It would have been incredible. But this is Joshua and Caleb giving a good report. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6 says this, Those who live according to the sinful nature have their mindset on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death. But the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Now, I don't know about you, but I've decided I'm going to put my mind on what the Spirit wants because I want life and peace. Amen? Amen. So the first thing I want to say out of this um, uh, passage of Scripture today is that God told Joshua, he said, I will, that he will exalt you. Joshua 3, 7 says, And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so that you may know that I am with you just as I was with Moses. Had I been Joshua, I would have said, Thank you, God. I need that encouragement. I want you to be with me because even though I've been through a lot in my life, I don't know that I've got what it takes to do what you're calling me to do. In fact, the truth is, if we could look deep into our future, it would scare us to death because God wants great things out of his people. 
Amen? Early in my life, uh, when I was in Bible school, I said, God, show me my life. Show me where I'm going. And the truth is, had God showed me then, I would have been so full of fear because of the, the, thing, the places he's taken me and the things he's done today. But this day, it says, I will exalt you. He wanted to establish the leadership of Joshua to give him the management control over Israel and let the people revere him in their eyes. Joshua had, had proved a faithful leader. I mean, he had, had long been a faithful disciple. He had followed Moses. He had followed the guidance that Moses had given. And Joshua had proved to be a faithful leader in all his discipleship. One of the things about Joshua I like, early on in his life, the Bible says that God would call Moses to the tent of meeting and Joshua would be there with him. And it says that Moses left the tent of meeting, but Joshua stayed Joshua stayed. He wanted to be in the presence of God. Joshua was a man of prayer. And when we pray, things happen. Amen? It teaches us to be faithful for God's plan in our lives. A very difficult thing because our nature wants recognition right now. But Joshua had decided, I will wait on God for whatever he's got for me. And if he uh, uh, leads me, or brings me to the point of leadership of Israel, that's fine. But I'm going to follow his faithful plan for me throughout my life. Joshua was patient and he waited for God to do it. If you're faithful in him, he will exalt you. Amen? Amen? Second thing I want to say, in fact, the next two things happened just about at the same time. I just, I love this story. Yesterday, uh, I got here a little bit early, and so I took a walk around close to the hotel, and I discovered a river. There's a river that flows through Rome. It's called the Tiber River. And I didn't know anything about the Tiber River, except I just heard the name once before. But I walked down by the river, and I noticed it is a, there is this deep, flood plain that's there. The river is actually kind of small right now, but there's this big area where there are times when apparently the river gets really, really big and it flows in a, in a big way and it's very, very wide. God said to Joshua, I will make a way across the Jordan River. Now, it just happens that at the time Israel was coming up from Egypt uh, to cross the Jordan to go into Jericho, the water was at flood stage. And um, it says the water here, it says verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 16, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan. While the water flowing down to the sea of Araba was completely cut off, so the people crossed, across, crossed over opposite Jericho. Now, this point is just sheer faith. It's where we just believe God. God said, I want you to walk across the Jordan. It's at flood stage. I don't know about you, but if it had been me, I would have said, God, you know, it would be really cool if we could do it. just wait just a couple of months. Just a couple of months. The water will be down. It will be much easier to get, get across the river. But God said, no, it's time to move. And when God says it's time to move, it's important that we move. If God speaks to our heart about something, he wants us to move on it. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 and 2 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. And in our minds there is no other way but by faith. Are you up against something today? Maybe something that's impossible. Are you going through something in your life that you need God to answer? Do you need an answer today? Amen. You know, what I love about going to church is that this one hour of the week, I get to, normally I get to go to church and I get to let go of every stress I've got throughout the whole week. We come together, we present ourselves to God, and God speaks to our heart. God speaks in a mighty way. I get such ideas like in worship time this morning. I'm thinking about things I need to do. I'm thinking about the things that God has prepared for me, and he just opens up and gives me answers to questions that I have. Are you up against the impossible? God's going to make a way. Israel was up against a lot of things. It wasn't just the river, but when they crossed the river, they were going to have to fight some battles. And it just happens 
that when they went across the river, when they got across to fight uh, uh, the, the, the people, there were the, the people happened to be giants. These people were three meter people. Three meters. Goliath, it says, Goliath, it actually measured Goliath. The Bible tells us that Goliath, when David fought him, was nine feet, uh, nine inches tall. That's exactly three meters tall. The people in this pl- land were big people. It was a great battle that they were going to be facing, and so they needed God to show them that he was going to lead and help them through the way. Israel was up against the river at flood stage. What are you up against today? Are you dealing with something in your life that you need an answer from God? I'm telling you that God is here today to help us, to help you, and he wants to speak to your heart today. He said, I will make a way across the Jordan at flood stage. Now, there were some specific instructions that, that Joshua gave to the people. Um, he, 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 he said that the, the priests are going to pick up the ark and they're going to walk to the edge of the river. And when they get there, God is going to do something and they're going to march across. But the, the, the truth is the time will come when he stops the attack of the enemy. No matter what you're going through, there will come a time when God stops the enemy. I just love that day, don't you? But it doesn't always happen in my timing. There, there are my, I, I like to say that God's clock and my clock are, are two different clocks because I'm relatively impatient and I want things and I want them right now. How many are with me? When we pray, we want answers right now. <laughs> and sometimes God answers right now. But sometimes he waits. And if he waits, there's purpose in the waiting. There, there's, there's something that, that he's trying to build in me, trying to show me, trying to teach me that will help me in my future. But I know that when I pray that God is going to answer my prayers. Now, the second thing that happened right about that time was that God stopped the water way up the stream. It says, verse 15, it says, Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap. And while the water flowing down to the Sea of Ereba was completely cut off so that the people crossed over opposite Jordan, opposite Jericho on dry land. Now to make this happen, he had to, they had to put their feet in the water. This is called an act of faith. Not only did God say, I'm going to answer their prayer, but he expected them to do something. The priests, I, I don't know that I would have liked to have been the priest that day. Because here they're carrying the ark, and they're walking to the river at flood stage. And when, when they got to the river, I mean, there was still water there. But the instruction had been that the people are to stay a thousand yards behind. And the priests would, would be leading. But the, it says that the moment that the feet of the priests touched the water, that's when God answered the prayer. Way upstream, he stopped the water. And the water began to, to, to trickle down. The water, the flood stage water, the river became uh, uh, thinner and thinner. And before long, there was no water. And the priest walked to the middle of, uh, of the river. Faith is putting your feet in the water at flood stage. We pray and expect God to answer. That's what I like. I notice that you expect God to do things. And when we pray, we expect God God to do what we ask him to do. But God says there's one more step, and that is to put your feet in the water. Have you ever done that? Have you ever had an impossible obstacle removed because you put your foot in the water? You took a step. You prayed, but then you took a step of faith, and God answered our prayers. You remember it clearly. I remember several moments in my life, mainly the first day I accepted Christ as my Savior. will never forget it because it required me to put my feet in the water and receive what God had promised me. This is 
David against Goliath. David was a one meter, one and a half meter person. <laughs> um, uh, I want to tell you a story, but I don't know if I have time. But, but my, my, I, I'm really close to my ancestral home, Rome. My ancestral home is Naples, and so today I'm excited to be as close to my ancestral home as I've ever been in my life. And so my grandfather came from Naples to the United States, and he had seven children, and, and uh, I never knew him, but uh, I knew a lot of his, his sons, and then I knew a lot of their sons. And all of my cousins were one-and-a-half-meter people. <laughs> <laughs> and um, um, I, I, we lived, I grew up not a long ways from where they lived, and so I didn't see them very often, but a few years ago I was talking with them, and one of them, and he said, you know, we were always jealous of you and your brother. My, my brother is like six foot five, he's a, he's a big guy, and I'm just six feet, but, but they are only uh, one and a half meters. And they said, we looked at you with jealousy because we wanted to be tall like you guys. And we don't know why, but you guys are taller than us. And I, you know, just kind of laughed it off. But I think, thinking of D David and Goliath, David was a one and a half meter person. He was not very big. And he's going against this big giant in Israel who was, who was three meters tall. And it required faith on David's part to believe that he can do that. I, you know, I, I, often we look at an obstacle and we say, hey, that is a really big problem. You know, and the more we look at it, the, the more scared we get and we, we are thinking that maybe, you know, maybe I know God is with me, but may, maybe it's not going to happen. But what God is saying to us, if he's with us, he will make it possible for us to win the battle and beat the obstacle that we're against. And that's how David's heart was. David said, I can, not only can I, I believe in my heart to go against Goliath, but this man is cursing the God of Israel. This man is mocking what God has done in us. And so how is it that the army is not able to push him back? I'll go and I'll take that giant down. And David won the battle against Goliath. This is the disciples in the boat in a storm in Matthew chapter 8, 20, 23. What a fascinating story. The disciples were going across the Sea of Galilee and while they're in the middle of a big storm came up and wind began to blow and wind, when wind blows on water it causes waves and when a boat is on water where waves are happening the boat begins to rock now a lot of us in life our boat begins to rock and we get afraid just like the disciples did and the Bible tells us that the disciples were so afraid and unfortunately that Jesus was in the boat but he had gone to sleep and so the disciples wake him up and say, Jesus, we are going to die because this, the storm has come and the boat. And Jesus stood up and he said, oh, you of little faith. You know, the fact is, Jesus was in the boat. How about you? Is Jesus in your boat? Do you know if Jesus is in your boat, you are okay? Even if a storm comes, even if your boat begins to rock, if you st keep your heart close to Jesus, even though it might seem like he's far off, he is not. But he is with you today. It's the disciples in the boat. This is the, the, this is the Canaanite woman in Matthew chapter 15, verse 21, who was around Jesus, and she came to Jesus because... Her daughter was demon-possessed. And you know, when your children are going through difficulties, that's the greatest pain a person can have. This woman was in exceeding great pain. And so she went to Jesus and said, Jesus, my daughter is, is struggling with this horrible affliction of a demon in her life. Will you help? And Jesus said... Um, well, it's not right 
to take children's bread and toss it to their dogs? And the woman said, yes. You see, she wasn't a Jewish person. But, Jesus, but she said, yes. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus said, what? That I haven't heard more faith from anyone in all of Israel. And because she responded and said that just even a little bit from the Lord is better than, than that, that, that God is going to take. Do you know, it says that that day, this woman's daughter was completely delivered because she persevered. And even though she was put off at first, Jesus still answered her prayer. Number four, hearing from God. The place and before Jericho could be comfort, conquered, Israel needed to hear from God. In Matthew chapter 5, um, verse 9, it says, And then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach from Egypt from you. So the place has been kill, called Gilgal even to this day. This is a place where they put themselves on the line. You know, God calls us to put ourselves on the line. Number one is that, that we need to come to a place in our life where we realize that we need God. We need his help. But you know, much of the world today doesn't even believe that. They think we're fine without God. I run into people often who say, well, you know, that's all good, but I really don't need God. But do you know that all of us need God? Because on a human, on a personal level, we cannot roll any reproach away from our lives. But because of this thing that God had called Israel to do at Gilgal, it says that I will, I will roll away the reproach in your life. And you know, the day in my life when he rolled my reproach away was the greatest day of my life. I will never forget it. I had been a, uh, going through a lot of struggles and a lot of pain. And there was a lot of depression and sorrow in my heart and in my life. And you know, that day when I asked Christ to come into my life, and I said, you know, I, I've done a lot of things that are wrong, and I ask you to forgive me, that day God brought peace to my life. I just love, there's a verse in John chapter 14, verse 27. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, not like the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And do you know that when we receive the peace of God, when he is in our boat, when he is by our side, the peace of God solves all the issues in our life, helps us with everything we're going through. And even though things might seem rocky, he is with us and he will help us with every detail of our lives. And then number five this morning, what has he done? The place of remembrance, remembering what the Lord has done. He helps us remember those times when we put our feet in the water. He helps us remember those times when he has exalted us or lifted us up or helped us in the face of people around us. What has he done? He helps us to remember. Do you remember the day Jesus changed your life? Do you remember a moment in your life when God touched your body? A few moments in my life are like that. I remember the day I came to Christ. But before that, I remember a day when I had a back problem, something major in my lower back. I was laying on the floor. My dad was a pastor, a man of faith. Do you know, he came into the room. He began to pray for me. He touched my head. And when he touched my body, I felt bones in, the back of my, in my back move. Uh, it was amazing that God touched me that moment that he prayed for me. What has he done? He, he does things in our lives to help, us, help, to help us remember. He does things in our life to help us believe God, not just for our issues, but for other people's issue. God has raised up a great church here. He will do things for you for the purpose of being able to testify and tell others what he has done. So what happened when they were crossing the Jordan? It says, uh, Joshua 4, 21, he said, and he said to the Israelites, in the future, um, uh, what had happened, the instruction had been that there were uh, leaders from each of the tribes of Israel. The priests walked into the middle of the Jordan. 
They held the Ark of the Covenant, and all of Israel passed by on dry land. But there were 12 designated, designated people who were, uh, who, who were to, to uh, pick up a stone in the middle of the river and take it up to the shore on the other side. And when they got to the shore, they stacked all the stones up. And Joshua 4.21 says, He said to the Israelites, In the future when your descendants ask their fathers, What do these stones mean? They mean this is what he did and what he wants you to remember. So he'll do it again. In other words, what they did was they took, um, they took stones to build a monument on the side of the river. Stones that had been in the river historically, but they took them out of the river and they put them on the shore. That's for the purpose of letting future generations know that God is able to help them with whatever they go through. What is it that you need today? Remember something that God has done. If God has done nothing for you, find someone that God has done something for. Let them tell you that God intervened in their life. And if you don't know anyone like that, let me tell you that God intervened in my life. He changed my heart. And he put peace where there was depression. What is it that you need him to do for you today? Is your river at flood stage? Are you going through a moment in your life where it just seems like nothing is going right? You know, I had one of those days not too long ago. I, I um, uh, drive a car that the manufacturer opted to not put a spare tire in the back. But they they did put a can of this spray stuff that if you have a flat tire, you spray this stuff in the tire and it'll fix it. Well, I was going to get a haircut and it, by the barber where I am, there's a, there's a uh, he's right on the corner and, and right around the corner, there's this, this wall that kind of sticks out sideways. So uh, there wasn't any parking right in front and so I had to go around because there's a parking place, the first spot around the corner. And so I did a really tight turn, and as I was going around, my, the tire of my car hit that wall, and it broke the bead of the tire, and it made it so uh, no air is left in the tire, and the, the, the tire is actually sideways on the rim. <laughs> and I'm going, what do I do now? You know, if I had had a spare tire, I would have been on the road in about 15 minutes. I could have fixed the tire. But, but... The tire was completely off. That spray stuff isn't going to help when the tire is like that. My day began to go south, to go bad. Well, I'm not worried because I've got this service. I make a phone call and the truck will come and they'll fix the tire and I'll be on my way. So I made the phone call and he said, uh, what's your name? Uh, well, we don't have you on our list. I said, but the dealer said my name was on the list and he gave me this number. If I called this number, you'd come and fix my tire. Well, they said, well, you're going to have to call the dealer because your name isn't on our list. So I called the dealer. Happened to be 1230 in the afternoon. The dealer is closed from noon till one o'clock. <laughs> so I wait and then I call the dealer. And the dealer said, no, you're on the list. We'll call them. Call them in 15 minutes, and they'll come and they'll fix your tire. So I called them back in 15 minutes, and they said, well, we still haven't heard from the dealer. I said, no, they said they were going to call. So I called the dealer back. And do you know, for several hours, I went through this process trying to get my name. In fact, in the middle of the process, a truck came. And the truck said, um, what is your name? And I said, uh, my name is Tom Benegas, and... I need to have a flat tire. And he said, well, we can see you need help. But uh, for some reason, it's going to cost you 150 euros to have the tire fixed for us to pick your car up and take it. I said, I'm not paying 150 for a, a tire. And they said, well, we, we can't take it. And so they drove off. And, you know, I'm just going, what is going wrong? I, I, I actually prayed. I read the Bible this morning when I woke up. Why are these things happening? And just to make a long story, a five-hour story short, <laughs> at five o'clock, that same truck came back. And he put my car on his truck, and he took it to the dealer. 
And I'm going, you know, things go wrong. I'm, 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 I'm a little bit upset because I've lost five hours of the day. What am I to do? And, and, and so we have days that where things, it seems, don't go right. But is your river at flood stage? That day, my river is at flood stage. And I'm having trouble keeping my attitude straight. And you know, attitude is everything. It's so important that we keep a, a good, positive attitude. Well, I was having trouble that day. But it says... Will you consecrate yourself? Will you set yourself apart? Will you let the Lord help you with whatever it comes, even if it's sitting on a corner for five hours, even if it's going through some major issue? And do you know, I know that many people have greater issues than just waiting five hours. We have sickness. We have disease. We have problems in our family. Our children are not doing right. Our job is on, on the line. And maybe we just lost our job. Do you know that God is with us? When we give ourselves to him, when we consecrate ourselves to him, when we set ourselves apart to him, he is with us and he will help us. What do you need today? Will you just believe that God can help you? That's the first step, just believe. Will you put your foot on the water? Will you take a step toward him? Will you do what he asks you to do? Will you let him help you today? I like Isaiah chapter 53, verses 5 and 6. It says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned on to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. What is it that you need? When Christ went to the cross, he had you in mind. He wanted to help you with your life. He wanted, first of all, to bring peace to your life. He wanted to bring help to your life. He wanted to change your nature. He wanted to let his spirit flow in your life. Do you need him to change your heart? He's here today to change your heart. Do you need healing in your body? Do you need him to touch your, your life today? Do you need a job? What is it you need? Do you need confidence just to stand for him? Do you need his help to encourage you so that you can stand for him? Do you need some kind of a miracle we serve a God of miracles, and this church believes that God will stand with you no matter what you're going through. What is it that you need today? Let's go to him. Let's ask him. Let's bow for prayer. Today you've heard a word from the Lord, and I believe God has spoken to you. So if you say this prayer with me, I know God can change your life. They're saying it live here in Rome right now with me because God can change your life. God has a plan for you, I've told you that. And I want you to believe it with all of your heart. So will you say this prayer with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life this day. Change me, help me, I pray, oh God, I'm going to live for you. Friend, if you've just said that prayer, I can tell you that God has just changed you and has come into your life. Now, I believe that today you may have listened to this and you've known that God already lives in your life. Well, God wants to speak to you and help you. So I'm going to pray a second prayer, and that prayer is for a miracle to happen for you this day. I believe in miracles. I know you do as well. So let's pray and let God touch you right where you're listening to this sermon. Lord, I thank you today for my friend that has heard this message. Lord, I know that they have needs and situations that's going on in their life. And God, you're a big God, and you hear and answer our prayers. So today, oh God, will you hear this prayer from your humble servant? God, will you answer this prayer on my new friend's behalf? Will you heal them? Will you touch them? Will you guide them? Lord, come in right now, wherever they're listening, Lord, and answer their prayer. Thank you, Lord, for doing that. If you've just said that prayer and listened to that prayer with me, I know that God has spoken to you. Would you do me a big favor? You're going to see scrolled on the bottom of this a website with an email address. If you said the prayer that said, God, come into my heart, or today you're believing with me for a miracle, I want you to drop us a quick note and say, hey, pastor, I want you to continue to pray for me and my family. 
You know, God loves you and he has a plan for your life. And I'll guarantee you, your best days are still in front of you. So God bless you and join us next week.